than so many people. They use their stage for practice. They are members of the choir. They won't come for practice on Tuesday and Thursday, and they want to sing on Sunday. They will be doing Riazda with the administration. How would that administration likely be? Perfect, right? They are not answering. So if we want to learn how to perform very well, we must do a lot of rehearsals before we come on the field. And that's why some of these things are necessary for us to know. Before you begin to apply for jobs, before you begin to present those beautiful grades of yours, I think you should learn some few things about what you need. So let me ask you to begin with, how many of you already have a CV right now? If I ask you, please send your CV to me right now before I leave this place. You have it on your phone and you can send it. It says here, one, two, three, four, five. That means those are the five people who are a little bit ahead. Now that CV may not be a perfect one, but for the fact that you have one, you are okay. I, uh, when I was doing my master's in Ibadan, University of Ibadan, I needed to work to support myself. So I went to one professor, I think that man is Fashola now, of Ikolaba Institute. How many of you know Ibadan? There's a place called uh, Bodija. After Bodija, there's Ikolaba. The man has a school. And uh, I left my CV then. I read biology education. I wanted a, a teaching job in his school. So I left my CV in his place and said, sir, uh, I, I didn't meet him, I met the secretary. I said, um, so, 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 I want to find out if my services will be necessary in this school. The person said, maybe, maybe not. So I should leave my CV. So as I was going, the man came in. I didn't know he was in. I greeted him. He said, who are you? So I just came to leave my CV. He said, what did you study? I said, biology. In NC, I did biology and chemistry, so I could teach chemistry and biology. No, 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 we don't need biology and chemistry. Go, go. No problem, sir. I don't. After that school, I went to another school in Bodija. Um, the, um, what do they call that? Bashoro Junction. The name of the school is Best Break College. I'm telling you these names so you can find out. That same day, I left my CD with the principal of the school. Just went through. So you are starting working. I said, why? I want you here. But what's your pay? He said, I'll give you 22,000 naira. For me, I think that was a good money. Then my master's getting 22,000 naira. So still the day, I said, I'll start working for the day. In the evening, when I go to, I received a call. Professor, this is Professor Palana from Ikolaba. I went through your CV, and I think I want you around here. Can you please see me tomorrow morning? I said, no problem, sir. I didn't tell him I've gotten another job because I wanted to compare the pay and see which one was better. So I read your CV yesterday night, and I felt I need you in my school. So we'll be willing to work with me. I say, perfect. What's your pay, sir? I'll give you 13000 to start with. Thank you very much, sir. Unfortunately, as I left here yesterday, I also left my CV somewhere else, and I was offered 22000 there. And I think I would prefer to go for something higher. I say, wow. And my timeliness made me to miss you. Oh, what can you do for me? I saw that you are also into music. Can you help us compose a school song? I said, perfect. We can work together. Let's do the music aspect of me with your school and let's leave the biology that I studied. Now, you saw so many other things that I did on my CV and was interested. When I was leaving school, I got 16 certificates apart from my BSc certificate. 16 different certificates as the president here, as a secretary here, as the chairman of Jesus. I had 16 of them on my CV. It's now that I'm, I'm growing up in the academics and removing some of them because it's taking so much space. So the more you go, you remove some. Now I want to uh, I have to give you this background because your CV speaks for you. Even in corporate and private bodies, you need your CV to do a lot of speaking for you. For us as academics, whenever they want to review us, when I was to be reviewed for a senior lecturer, I left my CV, you are not allowed to speak to it. They'll just pick it up and look at it, okay, you have been to this, you have been to this country, you have done this. So that's what speaks for you. And I tell you at this end, don't be stingy while writing your CV. So let's look at the writing a resume and what and what we need to do there. If you want to write a standard one, there's no particular format anywhere. But these are the key things that must be in your CV. Number one, your name. There's no particular way of writing names. But let me ask you this. I hope you know what we call first name. Do you also know what we call last name? Another name for last name is what? 
surname. So sometimes when they ask what's your name, your name should be Abiola Akinbe Nasibi because your first name should be mentioned first. Except when it is asked for that you should reverse the order, then that's when you bring up your surname. So your surname is usually your last name. So on your CV you can have, what's the name? Eriolua. So you have Eriolua Fashion. In cases where they ask you to write Fashion Auntie first, Fashion Auntie will be written first with a comma. You get it? So when you see Fashion Auntie comma, nobody tells me that that's the surname. But if I see Eriolua Fashion Auntie, I already know that Eriolua is the first name. If you have a middle name, Bridget, fashion auntie, it can come. So the arrangement of your name should be in that order. Your first name, your middle name, and your last name. Do we get it? Yeah. Then we talk about your address. Sometimes you use your name at the ending of your CV, and then you write your address, block three. Please write good address. Try and write an address that is traceable. Don't just write a vague address. Somebody picks your CV and is going to call you you should know where he wants to get you. Let the numbers be there, let the description as much as possible be there. Your phone number is very important if you write a good CV. Let your phone number be explicit. I see somebody write his phone number as 08034663016. Another person write his phone number as plus two three plus two three four eight zero three four six six three zero one six. Which of them do you think is my lighting? So you should try and package. Because somebody is going to call that line from another country. It may need the country code. So when I pick two CVs, just phone number can tell me who to give the job to. Just phone number. And if you can take over to the button, please tell me your phone number. Let me hear. Very good. Please tell me yours. Can you see a difference? Now, I was actually looking for something else, but it brought me to what I was now looking for. Some of you say, oh, it's who? <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> oh, it's not a figure. So you have a typical, a graduate, say, oh, it's oh, 340, uh, 340-416-08. Zero, zero is different from who. Even in writing, you should learn to note that. I hope you get it. Yes, let's go. Email address. Of course, everyone here should have an email address. When was the last time you checked your email? What's your name? Tosi, when was the last time you checked your email? Yesterday. As a matter of fact, your email should be prompting you. Any message that comes from now, please leave your email active, just like your WhatsApp. Let the messages come to me. People don't like to deal with you with number when it comes to official things. They want to send it to a mail because it's traceable. So let your email be active. What's your objective? As a as a human being, you should have an objective. Set it. I want to be a perfect corporate person that brings excellence and you know productivity to wherever I work. Let people see that they need you because of a kind of objective. We call it functional summary. You can summarize your entire life in three lines. An efficient, productive, and a resourceful gentleman who works in a thing to ensure that everywhere I get to becomes productive. Somebody fix it and say, well, this is a good summary. So please, that is also necessary in your uh, CV. The next one, summary of your qualifications. Most of the times, the reason why people pick up your CV is to check how qualified you have. Right now, what qualification do you have? What qualification do you have? What's your name? Please sit. We don't want to sit. Marvelous. Um, what's your qualification right now? SSC. OMG. Put it there. SSC 2018. BSC. Are you doing BSC or? BSC second class upper division. Please, if you have a first class, be, be, be proud to put it in. First class honors, mathematics. Don't put second class honors. <laughs> second class upper division. Yes, well, when writing your qualification, please write what you have. 
A lot of people write in view. Nonsense. MSC in view. Don't put it at all. You have not gotten it. Put the ones you have gotten. But let people see that you have just a degree and yet you behave like somebody with a PhD. I tell people it's not my PhD that gives me permission or attention anyway. Even with my first and second degrees, I was invited to where professors have not been invited to, even in my university till today. Before I became senior lecturer at their responsibility, the university will give to me that I am meant for professors. So they are waiting, just waiting. You just, just grow, let your time. They, they are waiting for the time to count because they can't just move you. The years must meet. So just waiting for the years to count and pronounce you a professor. Now, that's because your qualification is important. So everybody, please write it. DSC, Achievers University. And of course, what we write is not the name of the institution, but the name of the town. So when you have somebody write DSC, Ibadan, MSC, Ife, PhD, Lagos. So for you now, DSC, Omo, MSC, Edinburgh, PhD, Accra. Are you thinking that way? Oh, ESC, oh, MSC, oh, PhD. <laughs> I don't think nothing is wrong with having it that way. But sometimes, please, when you have a mix, it gives you, you know, some some attention. Prof, yeah, we write BSC, we do MSC, BSC, yeah. and uh, okay, I used to write what we do for my MSC. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. BSC, if uh, MED, PhD, divider. That idea that you have to experience, do you know it's, it, it gives somebody a little egg that somebody is BSc, MSc, PhD, Lagos, everything, one university. I have been in my university when they talk, say, this is how we do it in Lagos, this is how we do it in the You have just one experience. Some of us have three experiences. So we have been to three institutions that we can tell you how things are done in three universities. So please put the name of the, of the city. And um, as much as possible, also the days. Now, let's move on quickly. Your experience. Let's know what you have done before. You have been a course rep, put it in your CV. Class captain, secondary school, put it there. If you don't blow your trumpet, nobody will blow it for me. This is my best way. If you don't blow your trumpet by yourself, nobody, in fact, sometimes when you blow your trumpet, people want you to keep quiet. So, let's your experience, thank you. Let your experience be written. I have been the class captain when I was in Achievers, 100 and 200 level. I later became the president of Student Association of Achievers University. I was the uh, all rep of my hostel. I was the chapel secretary. I was the, eh? I told you I had 16 certificates. So you see, I, I was CJ, I was secretary of my fellowship, and I was the chief justice of Student Union, and I was, the, um, the one that did the lecture for people that succeeded, you know, in this and this and this and this. So, some combinations you can never imagine. Some of you have it. You are active in union, you are active in church, you are active in faculty, you are active everywhere. When somebody sees such a CV, say, this guy is versatile. When, you know, my late uh, pros in my former church said, this guy is versatile because there was a day we were also to play football. And they were surprised that I could also still play football. I said, you this guy, you still play do this this way? I said, yes. So until when you see those things on CV, when people enter, you don't know. I don't know exactly who she is. I don't know who you are until when I read your CV. So put your experiences there. You have gotten some awards. Best student of the year. Put it. Do you know, when I was in Adelaide in my NC2, I saw an envelope. And uh, I saw mates about maybe 45 naira, 45 naira those days. Very clean money. In today's money, it would be around 4,000. To me, it would be around 4,000. So I saw it in an envelope and I saw a small note. Please tell the registrar to call me or something. So I know that person has relationship with the registrar of the college. So I took the money to the registrar. So I saw it on the floor and I saw this handwriting. The registrar was able to trace who came and said, one of his friends, who, who has a daughter in the college, the lady displays the money. So a few weeks later, in my room, room 50, Ololoyo Hall, they brought a letter from the registrar. 
a letter of commendation. The registrar said, we have been able to see faithfulness in you, and therefore we are writing this on the behalf of the college to commend you. Please keep this good attitude. These are the kind of people we need in the country. I still keep that letter till tomorrow. Because I have gotten that commendation from somebody. So a time is coming. Somebody will say, he says a lie. He can steal. He will do the house. If I have been commended before for seeing money on the floor, and you are now accusing me of stealing government money, I think we can just oppose. Do you know that such commendation can work in 45 years time when somebody is just beefing you in your office? They can beef you, and then you set up a set up committee. You can face panel. Nothing is wrong with facing panel, but your resume will save you from those troubles. So keep those commendations. They give you a play best student of the year. When I, my friend was in the school, they did some, they did the magazine. I don't know if you still have that magazine. That magazine is still well cherished in my heart. I kept it because we have some awards. Best this, best this, best dress. I got best dress. Yeah. You know? <laughs> best things, best this, best this. You know, all those things, they matter. Keep them. Those are your experiences. What are your achievements? As you grow, you drop some. You know, it's, I told you, it's now that my city century paid is, I, I remove some of those things that I let's remove this one. This one may not be necessary again. But for you, please blow your trumpet. Are we together? Yes, now let's move on. Um, in case you are doing a professional study or your course is professional, please let them know your professional membership status. For those of us in teachers, we have teachers in the Castle of Nigeria, it's a professional body. We are issued certificates. So let people know. Nursing. I think that's, I think you are a nurse. You said that two days ago. It's a professional. Um, so let people know that you belong to Nigeria Nurses Association of whatever. Law students. Uh, I think law is also a profession. Yes. You are a law student. <laughs> who, who are the law students here? Okay, you are the only law student here. So put it. Let people know your professional status. Some of you have gotten some. Sideway professional certificates. Please put them. It will help a lot. Let's go. Then your language. Some of you can speak more than the English language. Please put it there on your CV. Language efficiency. I, as a matter of fact, I want to encourage you, please, if you can still learn Chinese, go and learn it. Because that's where the world is going. Are you listening to me? If you can learn German, go and learn it. And uh, French is almost gone, but French too, you can also learn it. These are things I am paying, I'm trying to seek for my children because my children must learn like four languages. They must learn like four languages. Do you know why? A time is coming that that language you know we sell. Some of us are deaf to language. I, I don't know if it, I don't know, but I can stay in the place for, for years and still don't speak it. But I don't want that to be repeated in my children. For some of you, you are still okay. I serve in Benway, and all through my one year, all I can say is, Isn't there any greetings? I try to lay, what I put in grocery, so I did it in high. But for some of you, you are still active in picking languages. Please learn more than English language. If you have to pay to do that, please do that. It will help you. Somebody will pick it up and send you to Korea because you are able to speak better. Somebody will send you to a place where language works. Sincerely. I entered a mall in Italy and I couldn't buy anything because the lady couldn't speak English. I couldn't buy. I wanted to buy an Italian shoe for my wife. I saw the shoe. I said, how much is this? She said, put on my she was like, say the prayer, I said, God, how will somebody open a mall, a public mall in, you know, in Florence and in a city? They can't speak English. So I walked out of that mall without buying it. Having been, I've been able to speak a little, something different from English, maybe I would have been able to, you know, complicate very well. So ladies and gentlemen, add more languages. Now, extracurricular activities and your hobby, please sit there. It gives advantages sometimes. For me, my hobby is driving. So, when I want to employ somebody, I think I pay a lot of premium on driving because if I want to make you chief executive and 
I want you to maximize time, waiting for driver may waste our day. But if you could drive yourself and make some transactions quickly, you know, things may move faster. There are some, there are some hobbies that gives you advantage. Not all hobbies is singing and dancing. What's your hobby? Singing. Everybody singing. Yes, we all sing. It's good to sing. But put some skills that you have as a hobby so that somebody feels this is an advantage. Like I told you, Prof called me because of the music aspect of my series. So I was the choir coordinator, I was the director of music in two places. That alone attracted me that. That means you are a music person. I say yes. What is when you play? I mentioned it. Well, you play this number of instruments. Good. Can you do this? I say yes. Your hobby can attract what your qualification will not attract. Some of you is baking. Some of you is pastry. Some of you is decoration. And you are the chief executive. Yet you know so much about decorations, combining colors, combining you know fabrics and all. That. When I came here, I said this beautiful creativity. Somebody did this. Out of being the hobby. So put hobbies that are attractive. Look for some. Deliberately walk towards that hobby and put it there. It may open some doors for you you never can expect. Now let's move on. Have you received some awards before? Yes, I've mentioned something in that line. So let's move on. We still have a long one to go. Referees. Referees. Two things. Your referee is Mr. Femi. Fulu, your referee is Professor, what's the name of our piece? Professor Samuel Nike. I want to give the two of you a job, and I'm trying to consider who I can hold responsible if you misbehave. Which of the two do you think I'm likely to give my job to? Who is Mr. Fallon? Mr. Fallon is a good man. But for the fact that I hear Professor Vice Chancellor at Chivas University, I hold up on If he offends us here, yeah, we know who to call. By that way, we threaten Prof with two letters from our lawyers. He will pay us quickly if you take our money away. Why am I saying this? Look for people that have strength to be your city. Inform them. Not everybody agrees to be your reference. For some of you, you have. You know, when I was writing one of my books and I had to look for one of my um, one of my mentors, he was then the uh, deputy vice chancellor of the State University, right now the vice chancellor of the the new college of education now turned to is my mentor. I moved close to him. For the fact that you see a vice chancellor writing my forward, it gives that book a little more strength than my head of department writing it. I hope you get that. So some of you, when you stand on the shoulders of people that are gone far, it's at your advantage. Have good relationship with people. Somebody say, I am Professor Samuel Taiwa Bimek, the student of affairs. He writes a referee for you. Another person say, I am Mr. Suzu, lecturer, Department of Criminology at Chicago University. What is is stronger than another? Don't you know? Yeah. So get referees that will open doors. As a matter of fact, I encourage you to get in the academia, get in the traditional, and get in the religious. Sometimes they request for three. When you have Reverend Father, the Right Reverend, the Most Reverend, they are not. They can't go away. Yeah? Or His Royal Highness, or no or four. That is your inferiority. But you can't write his name without consulting him. You must have a relationship with him. They will ask him, who, who is this person to you? So can we call him? So before you can write his royal highness, that means you've been to the pandas, you, he knows you. So have good behaviors from now. Some of you, the only time you greet your lecturers is when you want them to write reference letters for you. I tell my students, if I don't know you and you are not coming back, as a matter of fact, most 80% of people here will send to your lecturers, please, I'm going for masters in UK, write a reference letter. When they tell me such, I'm not telling you more. Hello, I am Femi Chikirika. I was your student in Arikule in 2013. What are you doing now? So I need a reverse letter. Yeah. But I don't know you. Sometimes I say, please hide me your WhatsApp. Let me even see your face. Yeah, so I know you. I know you know me, but me, I don't know you. So when I get like 20 requests in a month, I may not attend to more than five. Do you know why? Those five are those ones that we have relationships. 
I won't put my name somewhere and somebody will rubbish it. Maintain relationship now. Call your teachers, greet them, be polite, run errands for them. By the time you will need them, others will be looking for it, they won't get it. So your referees are those people who knows you. You won't just put anybody. You're still you enter into places you never can tell, and they want to confirm before they transact with you. Those referees are their confidence that, yes, I am the secretary of the cooperative of ASU, AUA, and recently we came up with this idea that anybody now coming to get a loan must bring three professors as referees before we give you one million naira only. Why? People are running out of the country. And uh, a lot of people want to come and take money in order to run a loan. So we said we don't want ordinary one minister, we want people who have built their name. So that the referee knows in our law that if you sign for somebody and the person defaults, we will just write the management and they will deduct our money from his money. Simple. So go and bring three professors in the system. Simple for us. So if you don't have a good relationship, you can't access our money. That's what relationship can be. So build relationship now because you need people in life. Are you with me? Signature. That's what we call e-signature right now. Every one of us you have it. Someone says, please send me your CV. You now send a CV without signature. So you should be able, you should have your digital signature. You know, don't put it anyhow. And when you put it, don't put on don't put it on a word document. Convert those documents to PDF so that nobody can you know take your signature and use anyway. So make sure you sign any CV you want to send out. There are so many other things that could be in CV, but these are the key ones I feel I want all of you to know because those are the things that speaks for you. Is that okay? Now, that's the first stage. I have four things, I'm done with one. Number two, now, I haven't gotten a good CV, you want to attend interviews. Like I said, it's good to have this entrepreneurial mindset, but nothing is also wrong if you're a technocrat, you have a stable job that gives you doors. You know, sometimes you are a big man, you have money, but you are not respected in some places because you are not having a former job. So the former job will open some doors for you that big money will not open. I'll tell you that. So get business, also think of something conventional. Red nursing, of course, good. You can have your own clinic, you can have this, but you also practice it, and that professional title you carry gives you some hedges above others. Now, doing interview, there might be three. Written interview, electronic interview, and oral interview. I have attended the three before in my life, so I can speak to you about them. The written, it could be electronic, it could be oral. Shortly after I finished my master's, and uh, there was this inspectorate thing on those state open that time, we were to go and do an electronic interview in Futa. I came from Ibada. And those were just the days that CBT were coming up. It's an interview, but electronically. They ask you questions. In a matter of time, you must attend them. You must be used to it. By now, I don't know if you do CBT exam here, do you? You don't do CBT exams, but an average person here has done CBT exam before. Jam before coming here. Please make sure when you are doing CBT exams, don't waste time. When you are doing electronic, just click and you know be sufficient. Be well balanced and don't allow yourself to be nervous in any way. The timing are usually enough, but sometimes the timing is what we are trying to work with. They give you so much to do, they give you a passage to read in few times. So they want you to just pick up your points in the passage. They ask you to read the whole passage and summarize. So you are able to, you need to be fast when you are doing an electronic uh, interview. Um, I will not dwell so much there. Written interview will also be, you know, they ask you to write. I went to a school in Lagos, it's called Lighthouse. Anybody from Lagos? So when I was awaiting my NYC results, so I was I worked in that school. When I got to the school, it's a very big school owned by Foursquare, and uh, I worked there for a few months before I went to NYC. I got there. They said, "All of you for biology, please sit down and then they gave us something to write." That's right. And some they created something for us. Beautiful to write, no problem. After that, they said, "Enter the class and teach." We did that. Then the oral interview. Writing may be necessary for people to see how well you could 
express yourself without tension. You know, when I ask you to sit before me in an interview hall, there is likelihood that you are a bit nervous. But in the real sense, that may not be you. It may just be because of one sarcastic woman that is posing her glasses here, that is just scaring me. And she's looking at you from the upper part of the glass, and you're like, wow, my God, how is this woman like me this way? So, but for the, for the reading, you are free. Nobody is you know, creating any fear for you and all that. Now, what you must know about interview and the oral interview, number one, is your appearance. For me, when I see people come for interview, it tells me ex exactly who they are. When you go for interview, please look great. When we say look great, it means looks, look nice. Looking nice is not a function of big money. Are you with me? It's not a function of big money. It's just a much, I mean, a function of creativity. Somebody will wear yellow and green and pink. Yellow shirt, green skirt, pink shoe, and black bag. As soon as we enter like this, the thing is just, your head is just, who is this? Is it a rainbow or an artist? Combine colors appropriately. Combine patterns. Checks. Nobody will use a check tie and check whatever. And the whole thing is disgusting. Stripes are contradictory. Your belt, your shoe, your bag, your shoe. Nice one. You see, all these are necessary. You must learn them. And for ladies, please, when you are going for an interview, as much as possible, let not your ear go beyond your shoulder leg. Pack it as much as possible, not to fall back. For me, it's carelessness. When the hair falls and it's dangling to the waist, to the waist it's here. Your hair is to this level. And you're talking, the thing is just doing like this. Distracting people. Do you know the hair that is to this level can be carefully made in a donut and then it stays there? And then it looks nice. So keep the moderate. Let not your cleavages come up. Thank God you are busty. Yes. <laughs> It's not your fault. But do you know you are highly endowed? Do you know there's a way you can use some rough just on the shirt that will cover the bustiness and it won't come. But somebody who's busty and is using a shirt and then buttoning it up and in between, the thing is now, you know, you see one month camel, another month Kilimanjaro, and then there's a valley in between. And the man that is not disciplined all through the interview said they're just trying to feel, what is that? What's that? You are distracting those who are interviewing you. Your dressing to the perfect, your hair, well kept, your shoes, well clean. Please, if you want to enter interview hall, just excuse yourself, clean the shoe you need to. Somebody looks at that shoe, it's dirty. Just use just a small handkerchief, just clean your shoes. Necessary. Your portfolio, nice one, not too big, not too small. All those things are what you need in your appearance. Look great. Being great is, before I go to the second, it's not a function of complexion. Some of you look down on yourself because you are dark. And the only kind of people in your life that is good are fair people. That's not true. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> we are African, we are, we are proud. Like I told you, in the conference I went in Italy, I was the only black man in the conference. And when I came back with some, a photograph, someone said, ha ha. Okay, why do you know that my treatment I got, because I was a black man, I didn't like it. Somebody said, you mean they treated you bad because you're a black man? You like this? What would they now do to... <laughs> <laughs> so, your appearance is not your color. Your appearance is not your complexion. It's not the shape of your head. You have, it's, if for anything you don't have control over, don't worry yourself. You're not the one that make your leg to look like this. You're not the one that make your head to be this way. You're not the one that make your nose to or your hair to flap. Just tidy it up, be moderate. Let not your earring be the one that they want to use to ride bicycle. You know those small children when they want to ride in a keke? That thing in your hair is what they used to use. Because the thing is like you are here and your earring is here. Be moderate. Don't use things that unnecessarily call for attention. Look confident, <coughs> cheerful, and respectful. When you enter an interview for let them see confidence in you. Let them not see pride in you. Good morning, sir. It's not everything that is good morning, sir. 
Pale za kuonja kawali. No. Let's this lead to self esteem you must have yet respectful. Good morning sir. Good morning ma'am. Please sit. Thank you. For every gesture you get, acknowledge it. Be respectful. Somebody is asking you a question. Where did you finish from? Achievers University. What do you have to offer? People that are finished from you think. They will hear you. What did they? Do you know what she's trying to do? Trying to test your temper. Achievers University. Eh? Private investment. What can they offer? Is it not money you paid and you got it? If I have money, I think from someone is just trying to provoke you. Get yourself calm. Thank you very much, man. That's an opinion. But contrary to what you said, in our university, we have this. As a matter of fact, nobody can stand us in the entire country. You are so polite. Is it true? That nobody can stand the achievers in the whole university. Yeah. You should say that. One thing I must let you know is this. Nobody values what they have until when they go somewhere else. I've said it here and here, over and over again. I've been to a number of universities. As a matter of fact, private universities. I've been to Babcock to speak to them. I've been to a number of, I mean, private universities. What you have here is highly celebrated. Sincerely. Not because I wanted to feel, not because I wanted to feel happy. If it's not, I'll just keep my mouth shut. Some of the things you do here, even in public investors, we don't do. Sincerely. And we have the sponsor of the state. We could decide to live luxurious life and all that. But what you have, we don't have. So please be proud of what you have. Yes, you may not have all that you desire, but you are not the poorest, you are not the least. There's no way I go, I look down on myself. The only time you allow people to look down on you is when they are looking at your shoe. Look up and believe in yourselves. Be confident. Be cheerful, be respectful. Next. I want you to note that when you enter an interview room, your entrance shows who you are. This is the way some of you enter an interview room. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. What is wrong with that? For the fact that you turn your back at the people you want to go and meet, there's a sign that you will turn back when you face trouble. Each time you see people, listen to me, this is psychology to Each time you see somebody and you have this thing of shifting your face before coming back, it shows you are timid. And people read it on you during interviews. So when you enter an interview or you enter as you're entering, you look at them, and then with one hand, you shut it up. Make sure that the door that was shut, when you open, shut it back. <laughs> if the door was not shut, please leave it open. Just enter. But if they, it's part of the interview. They will lock the door. They want to see if you will knock. You knock, and then you come in. Sometimes they won't ask you to come in, but somebody has already told you it's your turn. So don't wait for response. Just. Wait for a few seconds, one, two, three, and then you hope. Do you know why? You are trying to give them time to adjust. In fact, our offices in public service, the doors are supposed to be shut but not locked. They are supposed to be shut but not locked. So when people know, they should come in without you saying, come in or don't come. There are some of our colleagues who say, they ask you to come in. They ask you not to come in. If you don't want them to come in, you will lock the door. But if you know that you are open for public service, close the door, shut the door, and then you open, the person comes in. The reason why you knock is to give him time to quickly adjust. Perhaps he was eating. He needed to just tidy the table. Just a couple, few seconds, he would have kept his biscuits inside the drawer, clean his mouth, and then he's coming. So by the time you open, with one hand, shut the door behind you, not facing the door, and you move forward. Don't enter and turn your back against your interviewer. Are we together? Yes, sir. Next. Shut the door behind you with your hand. Next. Do not sit until you are offered a seat. I'm sure all of you should know that by now. Some of you, you see the seat is already waiting for you. <laughs> you know it's your seat, too. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. <laughs> and listen, guys, if you are in suits and you are sitting, please, on bottom. 
or you cross. Hmm? Nice way. But if you are not offered the seat, please don't sit. Ladies, when you sit, please don't open website. <laughs> you know website, some of you in the interview, you are just flapping your laughs like this. And the chairman of the panel is, he said he's just only, he's a pastor. <laughs> Super. This is going to come to you. Is this that not that that the liar that has come from the pit of hell to destroy us in this place today? Do not sit until you offer the seat. People like sometimes they may not attend to you about the seat for the next two minutes. They deliberately left you. So don't want to stand by the seat. Please sit down. Thank you. And you sit. Then the next one. And when you sit, don't be nervous. The backrest of that seat is for you to use. The armrests of the chair are for you to use. Use them. Maximize what you have been given. But don't slow. Hmm? Some of you now sit and then too much rest. Use this slightly. One hand on the arm of the chair. One hand to gesticulate when you are talking. It shows you are confident. You are very confident and you are in charge. Oh, so sit right. The next one I want you to take note of is that when you prepare for interview, it implies that your confidence is higher and you are likely to be successful and your job is likely to be yours. Yes, we may think we don't all need a job, but there are some juicy jobs that are waiting for us. Somebody just call you just to be in one place and the take home pay is good for you to start up a business. I've been working there for four years. So please be very, very prepared. And how do you prepare for interview? Everything you want to say, have the pre knowledge of it. If they ask me about my town, if they ask me about what I do, if they ask me about how I can add value, if they ask me about this, be deliberate for your sentences from the beginning to the end. How do you do that? Stand before mirror and talk to yourself. Look at yourself sometimes when you talk in the mirror. How does your face look like? I'm going to talk about conference later. Sometimes you are saying something and your body language is not saying the same thing. Look at this. Somebody say, you look at the movie and the title of the movie is Whisper, but on the billboard is it? What does this indicate? Shout. But the title is Whisper. That means there's a contradiction. There's no congruence. You are shouting, but your look is looking like whispering. So they, they prepared and um, ensured that all that you need works for you. I'm sure you're not going to pop their shirt. Just a moment, because I realized so much on you before. Now, another thing is this look at what you can offer. The company, they will always ask you, what can you offer? And each time you ask that, please think of a past experience. Each time you are asked what you can offer, think of a story. What, for instance, you are, you are coming to work for us in, in Enzo because you did clinical science or biochemistry or something, and they're asking you, what do you have to offer? I want you to think of what you have offered before while you are in school. So quickly think about story. What is the story? What have you done before? Quickly think about your past achievement. These are the things I want you to know that when you go for interview, and we call them behavioral interview, think a story. They ask you, what can you offer I did this when I was in school. While I was the course rep, I did this. While I was in 200 level, I, I did this. When I was in service, doing NYSC, I did this. So think about the story quickly when that happens. Is that okay? Now next is that your story and the way you relate them will be the key to convincing the interviewer that you are the right person for the job. How will you help us to cope the problem of uh, infection in this hospital. When I was doing my clinical year in the university, it should be the next thing. I 
developed a sanitizer that we used, and it was so local, but then it was able to solve these and these and things. That man feels like this guy has fixed something before, he can fix our company. So make sure that whenever they ask you, think about what? A story, a process, achievement. And very quickly, some interview skills I want you all to have. Number one, analyzing skill. Analyzing skill. You should be able to put analysis on what they have said. Tell them, do some dissection of their problem. Analyze it for them and come up with good solutions for them. Analyzing skill. The second one, I want you all to take notes, but let me just say this negotiating skill. What will your salary be? Now, each time they ask you for your pay, let me ask you, maybe it will help me. VP or secretary. We want to employ you in FMC. And we are saying, oh, you don't want FMC. Where do you, which one do you want? LNPC. LNPC. <laughs> of course, they have, um, they have health section there. And they ask you, what will your pay be? What would you like to be offered that salary? Okay, sit down and talk so that you can be comfortable. What will your pay be now? What will, how much can we offer you? Five million per month or per year? Good, five million, five million per month. What would you like to be paid? <laughs> what would you like to have the salary? What's your name? Blessing. Blessing. That's what I want. If you mention a figure, I will trust you. If you mention a figure, you are already passed. That means you can steal that money. Every good organization, they have a good structure of their salary. So you are not coming to change it. When they ask you what will you pay, ask them. What's your offer for people in my area? That's what I want. I don't want more than that. But as I go on, you will see reasons to change my pay. But for you to want to come and change their status quo, you are a terrible person. They won't want such a person. That's negotiation. So they ask you, Mr. Akiba Misili, what would you like to be paid in this teaching job as the head of school? I was asked that when I went to Premier Academy in Abuja. Shortly after my master's, you know, Lube in Abuja, I went for an interview there in the, in the school, it's the head of junior school, and they asked me, it's a white man, how can you say, look, you're good, you have done so well, what would you like to get? You have a structure, sir. You have a structure. I am not coming to change your structure, but I bet you if I work with you for two months, you will change the structure. Because you will have seen what I can offer, and then you are likely to see that that is not enough for me. But for as it is, this what you have on the table. It's what I take home. They feel comfortable. They feel comfortable and confident with you that yes, this guy has a good negotiation. So when I come in and I see the letter that they are given to me, that oh, they give four thousand, and I feel I'm not comfortable. I like say that amount is not comfortable with me. I think it would be this. They get me and negotiate. So negotiating is not bad. Sincerely, even in shopping mall at Rob, I see negotiate. I will see price tag on something. This thing is 4 euro. 3.5 euro, please. Oh, but it's already something. Where I come from with price. <laughs> Where I come from with price. If it's 4 euro, please, we can change this. It's $5, I think $4 they do. Sometimes, okay, we give you this kind of 4%, we give you this and that. That's part of negotiation. Even they live in life, we negotiate. Will you follow me or you not follow me? Will you marry me or you will be poor or you marry me or be rich? And the lady that I like him, but I don't like him, but he has prospects, he's likely to be rich. Let me follow him. That's negotiation. Some of you have made choices based on negotiation. 
the guy is not good looking, but yet there's something in you know, this thing looks like. It's negotiation. Hmm? Compromise is what relationship is all about. That's negotiation. Negotiation skill. The next one. Short sentences. As much as possible during the interview, do not keep long sentences, lengthy sentences, they are not good for communication. Let your pronunciation be well. Yes, we are not born in the great UK. Our spoken English may not be perfect, but it will be better by the day. So please polish, pronounce your words very well. Listen to foreign programs if you have to learn actually, to speak. Some of you are service oriented. They want to put you on the customer service. Apart from your good looking, they also need your good speech. Have you entered a place where the customer service says, Good morning, sir. How are you, sir? And you get irritated. This beautiful girl speaking this way. So, you know, it's because she has not really mastered so much on pronunciation. Organizing skill. How well are you able to put yourself? Sometimes that's what this bring up your credentials. And there, you open your portfolio. They are trying to remove letter from certificate, from the PSE, from the degree. I expect that you are coming from an interview, you will have set all your papers serially. So when they ask you, please present your papers, you just remove it, you unplug the thing. Maybe a small peg is on it, just unplug and give it to them. And they say, SSC, ESC, MSC. Hmm? That's way. SSC, ESC, NYSC. All the certificate during NYC courses, master's courses. That's where they know that this person is organized. But somebody, let the grandfather ask him, go and your paper to go there. So now, can you help me tell your brother to do this? What is this, brother? That's all it's not part of it. <laughs> Papers that are not relevant to the interview slip into your package. It's not good for you. So when you are doing your photocopy, the VSC is upside down. The NYC is upside down. So the man is sitting and he's turning his head because he's reading your paper and you're not organized. If you give him such a job, the job will be messed up. So, next one, please. Body language. Here, I think I need to do a little. Do you know that your body language speaks a lot? In communication, I'm going to talk about communication. There are things you don't say that people see on you, there are parts of your body that you touch that send a signal. Yeah, this is what that person is saying. This one is coming. Somebody is greeting you and you're like this. A guy is standing before you and is licking his tongue. Lick, licking his lips. What does that suggest to you? For speakers. Isn't it? It's this dirty guy. What's it doing? Just licking it. And, and having, some of them don't even know what it means. Though. They just copy it from a friend. That's just their own expression to show that this girl is beautiful. So, that's a dirty expression. Somebody sees you and you ask your sir, please, who took that in? Ah, sir, sir. And putting the hand on the chest in low shows honesty. It's a subconscious thing. People who lie don't put their hands on their chest. It's where they touch. They touch their nose or their head. <laughs> so I ask you a question, I'm taking your face this morning and say, yes. <laughs> I know you are lying because of that part of your body that you are touching. I have a group over 600 body languages, and I have taken my time to read all of them, written by psychologists. That when you talk to people and you look at one angle, it means something. When you look down, it means something. When you look up to the left, it means something. When you look to the right, it has meaning. I have it. It's, it's written in the book. The book was the book we so talk about. It's called the Art of Communication. So when you communicate to people and Somebody is rubbing his hand on his time. She has affection. He doesn't know that he's doing it, but he's in love. Somebody in the interview panel is just like, you mean you can do that? That man will score you 100 100. <laughs> Look at him alone. You can know that with him, but somebody is like this. <laughs> this is evaluation. This is assessment. When you enter into the interview, please be patient. Look at this. All of them are likely to be like this. Please, your name. As you continue in your interview, eyes will be dropping. Some will not drop at the same time. They are evaluating you. So some will take time to evaluate you and get confident with you. Some will just feel this line. I don't believe you. And so when you see them, when they see them doing something, they are flinging feet. When fingers are going up like this, it tells you, no. 
When people fold their hands, it means something. It means they are stubborn or rejected. So when you are talking to a lady and she's like this, how are you finding her? She's like this. After some time, if the hands goes down, you know that's green light. Because the, the, this is rejection. Naturally, somebody may not want to reject you, but when she's doing like this, it means you are still not coming. I have not accepted what you have said. But the moment you see this, and the fingers are open, when it still shows, it still shows rejection. But when nobody opens his hand in sincerity, subconsciously, things happen in our body that are orchestrated from what happens in our mind. So your body language should speak in it. Say the truth in interview because people know how to read it when you are there. You mean you were the class captain? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm the class captain. <laughs> How many people are you class? There's this program called um, Lions Day. Has any of you watched it before? 8 p.m. every Saturday, 8 p.m. Where? 8 p.m. NT International. Please check it every Saturday if you have time to. It's an entrepreneurial program where some heavy investors are bringing young Nigerians to come and get money to do their business. So you stand up and you speak to them. I think six of them, they call them the liars. I have a business in Akoko, this is what I want to do. When they interview you, eh, you don't know how they will link up their issues and they will tell you you are just lying in that area. And the truth is that you are just lying. You mean you are able to employ four people and you got a gross income of four million? Then how come are you not, able, are you not asking God? Well, when they're asking you questions, be sincere. You see, you cannot over impress those who are interviewing you. It's not the lies you tell that will get that job for you. What experience have you, have you gotten to do this job? Don't say you have been something you have not been. Because another thing you have not thought of will expose you. Sincerity. Let your posture show that. Yes, I don't know it, but I can learn. Especially if you look deficient in certain area. You mean you don't have an experience? I have gotten some experience out of, outside of this job. And I think I can fall back on those experiences to work in this job. It's a way of defending yourself that yes, you have not, you not been into banking before, but you have been into chemistry before. And if, if you could survive in chemistry now you want to get a banking job, you can also survive. Use that previous one to, you know, not that you just think, mm -hmm. what you I don't know how to answer that question. I don't have the right answer. Are we together? Avoid manners. Avoid slams. Some of you say, you guys, you guys asked me the other time. I want to interview you, so that's what I You guys asked me the other time if I've been to America before. Yes, my dad came from you guys. That alone is a slogan that some of you are so used to. I say, I say, you know, you know, those manners, please keep them away. Deliberately, when you are going for an interview, avoid slams. You, you bring up some slams, it may be in the social media, but it's irritating to somebody who is going to get a job for you. Don't put manners there. Are you getting me? And some of you point to people like that. You point to me. You said the other time, sir, with your left hand. You said the other time, sir, that I am not. No, that's not true. Don't be temperamental. Walk on your, on your temperament. In fact, they, more than your quality, especially when they look at your paper, some of, some of the time they have access to your paper before that time. They have seen that this guy is qualified for paper. They don't want to test the character. He has a strong 2 1, he has a first class, he has a 2 2, yet he has been able to do this diploma in this short time. Let's try his character. And they provoke you. You think you are nice? You think you look nice? That's how you, a woman has me in, 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 in a jail. You look so nice. I hope our girls are safe with you. I smile. No. I have worked in a number of places where I have access to girls, not secondary school girls. But if I check my records in those places, fully, if I cannot sleep with my friends, who will gladly do that for me? Your, your SS1 or SS3 girls are just too small. I can't remember when I was in SS3. Many of them were not gone. So when I tell them those things, I'm just trying to let you know that somebody feels like eh, people like you are cosmetics. Number two, they say, "Man, oh man, they just provoke you because you are nice." I hope all the uh, guy in this place, a woman early in an interview, feels like because you are nice, more looking and look nice than her, you are likely to come and chase the uh, boyfriends away. Now that you are coming, let her be well assured that as far as you are concerned, you are a child of God. 
And touching a man is a sin for you. So, let's have that confidence that in this place, it is job you have come to do for. Not husband. Yes, you are not married, but you are not desperate. They ask, young lady, you are miss. You said you are miss, and that means you would like to get an husband, so you, you are likely to be purchasing them, I mean, following all our customers and no problem. By the grace of God, I have this. Yes, I'm not engaged, but I'm not desperate. I will not jump into any relationship without procedure. There are things we do in my church. And then, and so you go to procedure in your church. You like your pastor, you respect him. Okay, not worry. Mr. Kuleti, my father, you say that for you. That's what you must learn. Are we together? Yes, sir. Don't get too excited. Don't get too overconfident. Some of you feel like I had the first class. In my master's, I was the top. In my class, there are 200 people. I was the first. In my class, there are only 800 people. I was the first. In primary, from primary one to SSC, I've only been topping my class. Yes, it's good to, to say this, but don't be too confident. Don't get too excited. And the last one I want to say there is please keep eye contact. When people speak to you, sometimes they give you a, a chair that can grow, that can wheel. This man is asking you a question. Wheel to him. Look at him. While answering his questions, keep your eye on him. This other one is asking you. Hmm? It shows that you are very confident and you are truthful. But when you're not truthful, I bet you, you can't keep eye contact. You can't keep eye contact. You'll be afraid. Something in you says, don't look at me. So keep your eye during the interview. These are some of the things I have brought in the second part. Can we move to the third part? Communication. Are you tired? No, sir. Good. Okay. Thank you very much. This is what is 